Hello, and welcome to the next edition of Esprit's Tips and Tricks videos. My name is Ian Martin, and today I'm going to show you how to utilize the Solid Modeler Toolbar in Esprit 2020 in order to help with toolpath creation. If you right-click on any toolbar within Esprit, the Solid Modeler Toolbar will be located on the following drop-down menu. When you have a solid model with more complex features and blends, it's important to know how to manipulate that solid to your benefit as the programmer. Even for the more routine operations such as an edge break, knowing how to manipulate the solid model can make programming smoother and much more efficient. For that reason, I'm going to show you an easy way to create a feature for an edge break using the chamfer function on our solid modeler toolbar. Here, I'll be able to define a chamfer and I'll be able to select items to which I would like to apply that chamfer to. In this case, I'm going to select the top edges of these four holes. Once I click OK, I can see my chamfer faces have been created. I'll go ahead and make sure that my selection filter is set to face, just to make the selection of these chamfer faces a little bit easier. Once I have them selected, I'll run wall recognition to create my four profiles, to which I'll apply a contouring operation to. Besides the options on the General tab, if Read Taper from Feature is set to Yes, the only other parameter I have to worry about is Total Depth. I don't have to try and apply a negative stock allowance and match the depth because the chamfer feature actually takes into account that 45 degree taper that we defined earlier. Therefore, we can enter in an arbitrary number, such as 100 thou, and sit comfortably knowing that the tool will move downward and inward to retain the taper. We can see that if I click OK. And we can verify that through simulation. I can see that my chamfer faces have been machined appropriately. I'm going to set my selection filter back to all and my work plane to YZX for this next one. The Solid Modeler toolbar can be used to add chamfers and blends, but can also be used to create multiple faces where previously only one existed. This can help us for what we're seeing inside of this part here. I can easily create a pocket feature to machine from the top of our part down to this floor here by selecting these faces and running pocket recognition. That's all well and good, but if I wanted to create a feature that started at this top floor, and went down to the lower floor and only machined the area in between, I would have a little bit more of a difficult time. The reason being is that if I select the surrounding faces and use pocket recognition, it will define all the space down to the bottom of our part here. If I use wall recognition, then it will define the space down to the lowest point on the selected faces. Neither of these are what I'm looking for, so I will utilize the split faces command on the solid modeler toolbar in order to create faces that I can use to create a more appropriate feature. What I'll start by doing is making a work plane from geometry. And I'll use this lower floor here. Then I will select the split faces command on my solid modeler toolbar. I'll set split type to plane intersection. Here, I'll go ahead and select all the faces that I want to split along this UV plane. And I'll do this by holding shift, selecting this face, and propagating my selection. Once I have my profile, I'll verify that split face is set to yes, and I'll click OK. You can see that the face now stops right where my lower profile is. So I'll do the same thing for this top floor up here. Using the split faces command, I'll set the split type to plane intersection. I'll just go around and select the faces that I would like to split. Verifying again that the split face is set to yes, I'll click OK. Now I can use propagation to grab all those walls and use wall recognition to make the ideal feature for the area that I'm trying to machine. And we can see what toolpath might look like if I apply this pocketing operation. I'm going to go ahead and set my work plane back to XYZ for this next one. 
Sometimes you'll run into a blend that is the exact same size as the tool you want to machine it with. A good example of this type of blend can be seen on the OD of our part here at the base of this boss where we have a quarter inch blend that we're going to machine with a quarter inch tool. The first operation that comes to mind with this shape of blend is a 3D contouring operation. I can quickly make an appropriate profile for the operation by using the edit fillet option on the solid modeler toolbar. So with these faces selected, I can select the edit fillet option. I'll go ahead and make sure that edit fillet is set to create spine curve, and then my faces are selected. And then when I click OK, I should see this curve here. This curve will follow the center of all the blends that you've selected. I'll go ahead and auto chain this so that I can use that with my 3D contouring operation. A 3D contouring operation requires a freeform feature. In this case, I'm just going to select the surrounding surfaces because that's all I really need. And then I'll click OK. And then I'll apply my 3D contouring operation. Here on the Toolpath tab, I just want to make sure that the chain that I just created is the chain I'm using as my profile. And I also want to make sure that I'm not offsetting the tool radius. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. To verify that I'm actually cutting the blend correctly, I'll go ahead and use Toolpath Analysis. and we can see that we're cutting that blend correctly. This concludes my Spree Tips and Tricks video. Hopefully this video helps you out along your programming journey with us. Please be sure to visit our website at espreecam.com to subscribe to our newsletter for more helpful videos and upcoming events with Spree. Thank you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.